Hey, what looks beneath? It's Dean, here again, writing you back with some more interesting stories. So, I got in contact with a friend, who also happens to be close relatives and friends to some Appalachian and Seminole in the Florida area. If you don't know, there are quite a few native tribes to the entire Florida Panhandle area. The Appalachian and Seminole are just a couple of them. But what I find interesting is their stories. This friend, when I started talking to him about the alligator man, or the half-man, half-dinosaur that I saw, that I wrote to you about, he started telling me some stories from his friends that they shared with him, all while they encountered in the old time in the swamps and Everglades. Things like old men shape-shifting into alligators, things of that nature, and they believe that the alligator man or at least some of the tribes believe he is a cursed witch, while other believe he is a shapeshifter capable of taking on form of half-creature, half-man, thus appearing like a dinosaur man, or like a half-man, half-alligator. I guess there are other stories about an actual clan, modern day, mind you, of evil shapeshifters living in the Everglades that transform into horrific-looking creatures, like the alligator man, for example, or lizard-like creatures, or worse, that are still active to this day. They take this form because taking that physical form allows them greater strength than in their human form, and they're able to have greater power, can conceal themselves, and invoke fear and terror on the innocent. And while I firmly believe the tribes of this region have dealt with this kind of thing firsthand, it's all just speculation since we don't have any definitive proof. But, these are kind of the best guesses, so I wouldn't be too surprised if none of this information was that far off from the actual truth. Anyway, just thought this little piece of information might prove useful to you in your search for the truth. For my 25th birthday party, me and a friend of mine were driving up to Vegas. I had never been to Vegas in my life and figured since I missed my 21, 25 will be the time to fully celebrate. We were taking the 15 up into Las Vegas. We were maybe only a few miles outside of town. It was still pretty deserty. We saw what I think was a skinwalker, not by the road, but off in the distance a little. My friend saw it first and mentioned it to me. I looked to see what he was talking about, and off in the distance was this really pale, thin figure, looked to be in tattered black clothing, almost kind of like a robe, like a robe you would see from the Middle East, full headgown too, and these weird antlers protruding from its head. It was very tall and very slender, maybe nine feet tall if I had to guess. It was out there so it's just a guesstimate, but it looked very out of place. I didn't see any details, but it was just standing there. It very well have may have not have been a skinwalker, but my friend and I were thoroughly creeped out and could just not understand while in this heat and the desert sun and day, while anybody in their right mind would be out there in the middle of nowhere wearing dirty, tattered black clothing like that covering their entire body and a headdress, just standing there, being perfectly still. It was very creepy and very strange. I'm not really sure how to categorize my experience with the paranormal or unknown, but this was back in the late 80s and I was on a little road trip across country. This particular event I was staying in a cheap motel, just outside of Fort Collins in Colorado. I remember being woken up in the middle of the night from my motel room by a very familiar voice calling my name from outside my motel room, calling me to come here. Here's the weird thing. The voice was my grandfather, who'd been dead for well over 20 years at this point. It was very creepy and I considered it either me dreaming or just a coincidence. But the more it spoke, 
the angrier its tone became, because I wasn't coming to the door and coming outside. And even weirder, it knew my name, or the person knew my name, whatever it was. I'm going to say Thing, because it gave me complete sinister evil vibes, like I knew it had to be more than a person. There was just something not right about all of it. I stayed in bed, tried to sleep the best I could, and this went on for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes before ceasing completely. I checked out of there maybe 8 a.m., and I was gone. I didn't stick around to investigate or see who or what it came from. That was it for me. Not me, but my grandfather. He has seen some very disturbing things out in Red Lake Reservation, which is in Black Duck, Minnesota. I am full-blooded native, but because of where and how I grew up, I'm pretty detached from my culture and heritage. Only knowing a little bit, but I have a very deep interest in the paranormal, and even cryptids. I'm not exactly sure what our tribe's definition of a skinwalker is, like the Navajo down in the Arizona range, but this is something else that's very similar. Like it, but its own thing. My grandfather would describe it as a tall white figure with large elk-like horns protruding from its shoulders, back, as well as head. He tells me, or has told me, he would always see it, wandering around the lower Red Lake. The Red Lake Reservation is actually one large lake. The southern half is called the Lower Red Lake, with a very small channel leading to the upper larger body, known as the Upper Red Lake. He's been all around there, fishing, living, and just doing things that grandfathers do in his time. He's seen this creature multiple times, and has given off very bad energy. He told me that he believes that it comes from beneath the earth. I'm not sure if he means like from hell or what, but says this thing has targeted him and has tried and attempted to come after him. Calling out to him multiple times with voices of his dead relatives and even his dead wife and even his own voice and children. Says sometimes that he'll see it on the highway nearby or even around his trailer. And personally, I think the most haunting was when he was trying to get into his truck one early morning, and this thing comes out of nowhere, behind the trees, and nearly approaches him, speaking to him telepathically, explaining to my grandfather he does not belong here, and if he continues to stay, this thing is going to rip out his heart. Said this creature was evil, had a face and eyes that were black, and had long, jagged elk-like horns. I don't know if that fits the description of a skinwalker, or what, or if maybe our tribe has its own skinwalker. I don't know, but it's terrifying to think about. I've asked my grandfather, too, if he believes it was a shapeshifter, someone who has transformed. And while my grandfather isn't sure, he knows one thing. This being is of dark energy. When I was nine years old, my older brother, who was 15, and my mom and dad, we all went camping for a week in Prince Albert National Park, which is up in Canada. The adventure was a blast. We had a lot of fun on the lake and just the area around. We did all sorts of stuff. But my story is actually my brother's tale. One night, when he got out of the tent, he tells me that he believes he saw a monster, which also appeared to take different forms and shape, according to him. He said he was out peeing by a tree, and behind the tree, not the one he was urinating on, but another one close by, a large wolf came behind it. And when he said he stared at it, he was frightened by its face. He said that it had a very human-looking face. The way he described it was half wolf and half man, and very striking evil yellow eyes. Said that it stared him down, as if my brother, P, 
peeing on this tree had disturbed this wolf-man thing. Then, it looked away from him, went behind some brush, and after about 20 seconds, came back out as a very large brown bear, with also a distorted face. This freaked my brother out, and so he ran back to the tent, freaking out to me and both my mom and dad. They tried to calm him down, and just explain that it was probably just a trick of the dark, and that he was just seeing the wildlife. I talked to him about it the following day. He told me about it in more detail. Basically what I just told you. He said the face just looked far too wrong, far too human to be an actual animal. He's a firm believer in shapeshifters and all of that. I didn't even know what any of that was at nine years old. But the older I've gotten, I've come to be educated on the subject, and I do believe his story. He was pretty genuinely frightened. I mean, I see no incentive for him to make that up, or to fake it. He had nothing to gain, and he was never a prankster, and never one to pull any stunts like that, or make up stories or lie. So, I have no reason not to trust him. I am aware, though, that shapeshifters and people taking shape of animals is generally a Native American thing. I know nothing of the tribes in that area or the things they practice, so I couldn't tell you any of that. But I can tell you that it does sound like it might be a case of a shapeshifter to me, and it must have just been wandering through the woods, maybe looking for somebody or something. My brother just so happened to leave his tent at night and go relieve himself. Maybe this thing or person was not too far away, heard him and saw him, and apparently was startled. Then, went behind the nearby brush to take a different form and shape, which my brother clearly saw. When I asked him about this, he just said there was no way that a wolf that looked very uncannily like a man could go behind some brush and within only a matter of 30 seconds disappear and a large brown bear walks out having the same distorted human-like face. It really makes you question the secrets of the wild and what really goes on in the forests when nobody's around. Maybe there's a lot more to guardians of the forest than we think. I like to think of it that many Native Americans are endowed with specific magic and they're able to shapeshift and guard parts of the woods. From what, I don't know. And from who, I don't know. Why? Well, maybe they think of themselves as guardians. That's if my theory on shapeshifting is even correct. For all I know, he could have saw a demon. I'm not too sure. But the shapeshifter thing sounds much more plausible if you believe in cryptozoology and all of that. So I wanted to ask you, do you believe my brother saw a shapeshifter that night? And what are the tribes around that area? What do they practice? Do they have any sort of skinwalker shapeshifter thing in their tribe? Is there anybody that could be considered a black witch and practice dark magic to shapeshift? Or do they maybe have any guardian figures that would shapeshift and protect the forest? I'm very curious. Please, let me know what you find. Thanks.